everyone and welcome back to Zoo Tycoon 2! And we are here admiring the fact that our guests seem to be very much enjoying their tour of the Dromedary Camel and Arabian Horse and Finnick Fox exhibit. I'm pretty sure there's several Finnick Foxes around here. Oh, and Coyote One just gave birth! Oh my goodness! Oh, let's go check this out. We probably need to actually adopt out, um, I don't know about coyote families actually. I don't know if the older siblings of a coyote family will help take care of their younger siblings, but I'm pretty sure this area is- <gasps> Mini coyotes! Look at the wee little babies! Oh my gosh, what a flop. Did you see that flop? She's just like, okay kids, come get some food. Flop right down. Oh my gosh, look at them. Little coyote puppies. That's so cute. But coyote uh, one and coyote two actually have, whoa. Oh my gosh, you guys. It's our 1,000th guest! Oh my goodness, our 1,000th guest has now visited the zoo. I can't believe that. This is one of our oldest zoos. We've actually had it, oh my gosh, maybe for over a real life year. So that's super exciting. I don't think I've ever like reached the 1,000th guest uh, milestone before. Oh my gosh, and can we get to like 5,000, 10,000, 20,000? Oh my gosh, you get a little statue if you have 20,000 20, guests show up. Oh my goodness, that would be so much fun. What I really want from the rewards though is actually, let's see if I can find it. Do, 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 do. Tour Tycoon Level Award. Raise 250,000 in tour donations to make a decorated Jeep tour vehicle available for purchase near zoo. And that's not what I really want. I want, I want, no, not that one. Hmm, hang on. There is the headset kiosk. I really, 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 really want the headset kiosk. And here it is. Um, is that it? No, that's not it. That's a decorative wall column. Never mind. That's not it. Sorry, guys. There we go. Headset kiosk. Raise $125,000 in educational donations to make the headset kiosk available for purchase in your zoo. And that is one of my huge goals that I want to reach. And so we need to put like a lot more educational little, little kiosks and things all over the place. Um, because people will look at them like the little arachnid kiosk we have or the little TV kiosk so I want to like sprinkle some of those all over the place because I didn't realize we were getting so close in educational donations so today is gonna be your 1,000th guest education celebration day unexpectedly yay and then we need to breed 10 different species of endangered different species that's probably where we haven't quite pulled this off yet of endangered or critically endangered animals to receive the animals babies statue so i really want to do that i wonder how far we're not quite not even quite to five so we might look into some more critically um endangered or endangered species that we could breed here in the savannah zoo because i want that statue too well now we have some award goals so that's pretty exciting and one of which is going to be um trying and, and it, one of which is going to be trying to get that education up so hmm. well first thing first I'm not sure about having so many coyotes are you guys all gonna be okay coyote 3 is just grooming oh my gosh okay we have a lot of coyotes in here and I didn't notice so we have coyote 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so I think we'll go ahead Oh, look at this! Coyote 5 isn't even in its exhibit! We're finding a lot of animals that have started to disappear into other exhibits lately, guys. I think we need to discreetly go ahead and let Coyote number 5... Um, are you a baby still? I don't know. We're gonna put Coyote number 5 back in its exhibit for one thing. So it can stay in here, and after it finishes eating, and if it's okay, we're gonna release it to the wild. Not really... Coyotes are not one of those critically endangered sort of species that you really need to worry about. So we're gonna release coyote number three, because there's eight coyotes now. We kind of need like names for these coyotes. So I'm, oh, here's the dad. Okay, so I'm actually gonna name the dad Wiley. Just, and it's probably the wrong way to spell Wiley, but like after Wiley the coyote. And then we have, I'm, I'm gonna name you Kit the coyote. So Wiley and Kit. And then we've got coyote number three is just adopted out. Coyote number four is inside its exhibit, thank goodness. It's just sniffing around, so we're gonna release it to the wild too. Um, let's see, then we have coyote five, six, seven, and eight. Um, coyote number five, we just picked up. It was wandering around. Where's your brother? Oh, thank goodness, or sibling, sister, barking at coyote two. We'll go ahead and release her to the wild. And then we'll just leave like one one kid and the babies with these coyotes. So that should help over there. 
And let's start thinking about where we're gonna put some more educational kiosks and educators. Because I really, 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 even though it says like nobody uses it in the lifetime users, I've seen people walk by and use these. So I really wanna get like discovery kiosks put everywhere. Oh dear, our warthogs and meerkats are pregnant again. We really, <gasps> look at our lion. See, our lions are being so cool. They're right here where people could like see them and admire them. Oh, what's going on here? <gasps> She's cleaning her little paw. Oh, see, we need to attract guests over here. There's nobody over here, sir. Sir, where are you going? Where are you going? I guess you're going to go look at the uh, African wild dogs. Oh, look at his hat. He's got such a cool hat, you guys. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, and what's this? Okay, phew, that's the real artificial carcass with me. I was worried that we had more, more dead little baby Nile crocodiles since the Nile crocodiles ate their own young last time, which was a little bit, a little bit worrying. Oh, and Coyote 5 wants to reproduce, but can't find a mate. So we'll go ahead and release you to the wild as well. All right, and so let's focus on our education podiums and educators and educational kiosks and things like that, since that is gonna be our goal is to hurry up and get it to the point where people can get the headset kiosk because then everyone walks around with the headset kiosk and you make so much money even though we're not really we're not hurting on money to be honest all right so let's see um there's not only the discovery kiosk but there's like the touch pool there's um fish we i mean i guess it would be okay to put fish near the, the little mock nile river that we have over here so let's see what we've got Gonna educate our guests, make them so smart. We've got some educator podiums. Putting them next to the lions would definitely be a good idea. So let's see, where should I put? I think I'm gonna put her, ooh, right over here. Like, so people come down and they can listen to the educator while they look at the lions and have a little resting spell with a nice fountain so people can sit and relax. Since we have so much money, I'm fine with hiring another educator right over here. If I can line it up right, right there. So we'll line up two educators there. Um, maybe it would be a good idea to put a little ATM back here as well. So I'm just gonna discreetly tuck an ATM over here in case guests need to use it. Cause we're way at the back of the zoo back here. All right, let's see what else we've got. Here we go. So these are like all of the little enrichment, educational things that people can start messing with. They have the Arabian Nights reptile kiosk, which is so cool. I kinda wanna put that somewhere for people to see in a central location and kind of mess with. Cause that would be like, they have little leopard geckos, I think, which is so cool. Arabian Nights, reptile kiosk. It needs to be at a point where it has a lot of traffic, I think. So people can be like, ooh, ah, awesome reptiles. Hmm, this part gets a little bit of traffic. I kind of want to remove the statue and put this here. Cause then people would walk past it, maybe right here. Because then people will walk past it on the way to the bathroom. Oh, oh. They'll walk past it if I put it right here. And then hopefully look at it. Um, in front of the bathroom, in front of the stairs, in front of here. It would need to be next to, maybe over here? Yeah, over here. And we'll remove like a couple, a couple benches. Whoops. Not the floor, but the benches. There we go. And then we need to make sure that there are actually some donation boxes. I think that's where I mess up is I don't put donation boxes close enough to where some of these educator spots are. And so people aren't really encouraged to donate. Uh, is that a donation box? That is a donation box. So people aren't really that encouraged to donate when they come and like they see the educational centers and they hear the educators and you want them to give an educational donation. That's different from a normal donation but you need to have an educator box near, or a donation box near them if you want that to happen. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna put this uh, maybe right here, just like catty corner to the, the zoo map right there. Um, we kinda need more, um, if not viewing canopies, I think some of these desert arches would go over well over here. Just to sort of get people more in the mood. All right, and then I'm gonna move this desert trash can maybe over here. I need to put it somewhere. Where's this kid going? There's a kid over here. He's going on a zoo tour. That's so exciting. What's my rating on this zoo tour? Let's find out. Does it tell me? Let's see. 
It's open. It was great seeing those healthy animals on tour. Wow, the safari theme was fantastic. I recommend creating some savanna biome on this tour. Interesting. I wish I could see some safari theme buildings on this tour. That is new. I've never seen those requests before. There, the donations are coming in at least. Um, does it not give me a rating on my tour? What if I click on this? And nope. I can't remember how I saw the rating on my tour so I could find out like what we were at. Oh, there it is. Oh, we're three stars. And I wonder if that's because of the number of vehicles we have, the lifetime guess. Maybe we need to add some more, some more creatures in here. Maybe take out some of the camels who are blocking the way of walking on the Jeep. We'll figure it out. All right, so back to this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put Desert Arch right here. I'm probably gonna move the Safari Bench. I wonder if somebody can rest there. That probably wouldn't be comfortable on that incline. How about right there? All right, so hopefully that'll help a little bit. Um, can I move the zoom app and the donation thing? I can, so I'm gonna scooch them down a little bit. So now, the, I guess the coyotes never really had a proper donation place on this side. Do I have donation spots on this side? I do not, so we need to put those down. And we need to put them down next to the educational, do the educators to get those educational donations. I really want them. All right, we'll put that there. Hopefully that'll help. I'm gonna grab some of these pretty, pretty plants and we're gonna hide the music rocks a little bit. Just so it looks a little nicer. There we go. Much better, much better. Phew. All right, good, 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 good. All right, so let's see. And then we need the actual educators. I'm kind of focusing on this area because I feel like we've done pretty good on some of the other areas. But I really want to get the educational donations through the roof. All right, so we'll start with that and then maybe put some more things down here. There's a face painting kiosk, which I think some people might really enjoy. Just a little normal discovery kiosk is always a good idea. Just kind of sprinkle those around. In fact, I really am just going to kind of start sprinkling those around. So everyone has to deal with it. Everyone has to have a little bit of discovery. Oh, Sandcat 20 just died of old age. Oh. And then the ringtail emer just died of old age. We're gonna see a lot of that, you guys, because we have a lot of older animals. Let's see, and I'm gonna put a discovery kiosk over here in this corner. The idea is to kind of put them in the middle of the, in the middle of the path, so that that way people can sort of see it from both sides. Let me see, discovery kiosk. This is the face painting kiosk, which I think would be kind of fun. I don't think it raises educational value though. So I'm gonna put this discovery kiosk right here and scoot the desert binoculars down a little bit. So now we have an educator right here. Discovery kiosk, hopefully lots of, uh, lots of, oh my gosh, Warthog 100 is going to give birth. No, I already, you already gave birth. I adopt you out, oh my gosh. <laughs> we have enough babies and they just keep having more babies. So many babies everywhere. All right, let's see, can I put, what else do we have over here that we could potentially use? Um, there's photo booths and animal photo booths. The Arabian face painting stand, which sounds kind of interesting. Here's just the normal reptile house. Let's put some research into that. The aquarium with tropical fish, aquarium with seahorses. Let's do the aquarium with tropical fish and then pretend they're like Nile fish because they're, they're not quite, well, they could be kind of tropical in some areas, but we'll put like little Nile fish down near the river. Um, hopefully that'll help. Oh my goodness, we have so much going on. Oh, and then also, uh, ooh, a meerkat has just grown up, so let's go ahead and adopt you out, because <laughs> this area needs cleared out. So you guys, I think I mentioned last time, I did a little bit of research to see what a giraffe herd size normally is, and it turns out most giraffe herd sizes, they're not super social animals. They really aren't. They don't really vocalize to each other. Um, regularly the way like you would hear the lemurs chattering at each other all day the meerkats chattering at each other all day birds chattering at each other all day not so with giraffes giraffes don't really they have the ability to vocalize but they don't really utilize it very often and when they are in herds it's very loose herds there's not really a super strict hierarchy there are usually herds of females with their babies and then a male will kind of stick around because he's sort of opportunistic and looking for a mate and sometimes you'll have young bachelor herds for the younger males 
males, but it's very loosely defined. It's not like an elephant herd or a zebra herd where there's a very, 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 very strict hierarchy. Very loosely defined and usually pretty small. I saw when they were like reading off the numbers, most herds are usually anywhere from 10, 11, 14 individuals, including moms and babies. Um, in the herd group and when you see lots and lots and lots of giraffes all together much more than like you know 11 giraffes that's normally a bunch of small herds just kind of hanging out in the same area because the food is good so we're gonna go ahead and we are going to adopt out a ton of the giraffes that we have here because I think we have way too many they're blocking the tour they're eating all the food they're keeping this place super messy so we're gonna go ahead oh my gosh and you know what else I think we could kind of adopt out some of the dromedary camels but the cheetahs are doing well so that that makes me happy we'll check in on the cheetahs in a little bit uh, Nile crocodiles I think some of the babies I think one baby I think Nile crocodile number five is pretty quick moving survival of the fittest and it has managed to survive um, everybody eating it so far and here's a fennec fox that is not very happy how can I help you oh it's challenging another fennec fox so we're gonna go ahead and adopt it out because it's clearly not having a good time here all right, mossy eye giraffe. We're gonna just, oh my gosh, look at all the pregnant ones. All right, we're gonna find all the unhappy ones, the ones who just aren't really, they're like, there's not enough space here. She, 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 and she is pregnant. So we have four pregnant giraffes, five pregnant giraffes, six pregnant giraffes. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and adopt out like all the not pregnant giraffes because they're probably like, this is getting crowded. I, I need my own space. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and adopt out some of these males. And that's very like in, a normal herd this would be totally like common of it getting kind of crowded food getting a little bit hard to find the giraffes going you know I think I'm gonna go find like my own group and a lot of, especially the younger ones will just kind of shear off from their parental group wander into some other giraffes who are kind of loosely wandering around the place and form a group with them all right so we've got reticulated giraffes now so how many females I have a lot of reticulated giraffes too so we're just gonna go ahead we're gonna go down that list we really don't need very many male giraffes oh my gosh the gopher tortoises hi guys we have so many pregnant females so many pregnant females we're gonna have another baby boom in fact I think I'm gonna go ahead and send these two these two are like no nah, it's a little crowded here we're gonna go find our own place um this reticulated giraffe so we have three pregnant female reticulated giraffes and we have four about to have babies right this second, mossy eye giraffes. Two males now. Um, one male reticulated giraffe. I feel like that's much better. I feel like we adopted out a whole bunch. It should be much better now. Um, we've got a lot of African lions, as usual, a million and a half meerkats. So we'll work on that more. <laughs> That's one of the, um, actually, if you think about it, this is one of the interesting challenges. Daffodil, why are you miserable? Are you stuck? Oh, Daffodil's stuck. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, Daffodil. I hope, oh, and she's about to like have a baby any second now. And she's miserable and she got stuck behind the fountain. That's not good, not good. But this is actually one of the challenges, even for real life large zoos. What do you do when your breeding programs are a little bit too successful? What do you do when you have so many animals? Do you adopt them to other sanctuaries? Do you release them to the wild? Ideally, a lot of the animals you wanna kinda of release to the wild, but what happens when your coyotes breed? Coyotes are a dime a dozen in the United States and often killed in mass as pests. And so you can't exactly go, I'm gonna release this pest item into the wild. That's not really a good idea, not really how it works. And what a lot of zoos will do is actually make sure that they only have like one gender or the other. They'll remove eggs if somebody lays eggs that wasn't supposed to. They'll give contraceptives or actually like birth control to the animals. And they actually do that with a lot of elephants because you don't really wanna breed elephants in captivity if you aren't set up for it. Not a good idea not fair to the elephants especially as emotional as those creatures are so you will get a lot of um zoos that are increasingly trying to use contraceptives so that you can safely have the animals in your zoo and be responsible about their well-being and their welfare it's kind of like if you get a dog and you make sure that your dog or cat is spayed or neutered because there's lots of dogs or cats and you don't need them to be having puppies and kittens like by accident so it's kind of like that and I, I really applaud a zoo that will kind of put their foot down and try to take good care of their animals Phew. But that's enough chit chattering while I'm just trying to adopt out meerkats. We have so many meerkats, and the black rhinos are pregnant, which is kind of awesome because at least they're rhinos. Woo! Rhinos.
rhinos! We're breeding rhinos! And the Sifakas, we will deal with the Sifakas and the headache that is the Sifakas later. For now, I'm really happy because I feel like, oh, and Daffodil's gonna give birth now that she's not stuck behind a rock anymore. Because I feel like we have lightened up the herds inside of our safari zone. I think these guys are going to be a lot happier. We might kind of lighten up the zebra herd later. Uh, Daffodil, it's okay. Might go through with the dromedary camels. I actually don't know what the average herd size is for dromedary camels. So I'm kind of curious. <gasps> oh, and there's a kidlet. There's a kidlet viewing things. Oh, and he's learning something. Oh, what did he just learn? Watching Educator Hamlin is very educational. Yes, that's what we want to see. And watching Educator Christian is very educational. That is 100%. Look at him, that little educator bubble. That is what we want to see over everybody's heads because that's the goal of what we're doing here in this zoo. Educating people. Getting them super, super happy. Are you guys learning anything? Man, they really like the Safakas. You guys learning anything about how, how everything goes? Unable to reach the artificial carcass. Okay, I'll scooch it over. There you go, guys. All right. Uh, and we had a mossy eye draft just pass away from old age. And we still don't have a lot of people down here. So I'm thinking we might start adding in some more exhibits next time. Is this a bluegill? How do we have a bluegill over here? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. We kind of had an escaped crocodile last time, too. So I'm a little bit concerned about that. But what I want to try doing is adding in some more exhibits, maybe with those endangered or critically endangered species, so we can try to breed for their babies. That's when it's positive to breed for the young, especially if you're set up for it. Um, and maybe put some hippos in. I want people to come back and look at our lions. Lions are like a big star item, you know what I mean? It's a big deal. So we'll look into some more of the endangered and critically endangered species. Kind of like our little, our little African wild dogs, which are doing really good. Ooh, we got the little reptile house done. Yay! I'm gonna add that somewhere. We'll find a spot. <laughs> we'll find a spot for it. But yeah, I really want to start adding in um, more of the critically endangered safari animals. So we'll look into that and we will look into trying to get the educational value up a little bit more. Because getting the headset kiosk is something I love doing. So I will see you guys next time. Oh, an African wild dog too is now pregnant again. Woo! <laughs> Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.